thank you everyone. My name is Tianran Zhou from Huawei, and uh, this is a joint presentation from me and Albert. Uh, I would like to give the first part presentation and then invite Albert to give the second half. Okay, let's get started. Android is popular. Uh, I believe many of you are using an Android phone. Android is customized from Linux for mobile devices. And Linux, as a general operating system, uh, is customized from Linux for mobile devices. And Linux, as a, a general uh, operating system, is also customized for PCs, servers, and uh, uh, so that it can um, meet requirements from various users. In this sense, OpenStack is similar to Linux as a general cloud OS. Uh, it's a candidate for the uh, virtual infrastructure manager in NFV architecture. Um, NBI is essential to enable the application and the manual innovation. This topic will discuss considerations and the prototypes on customizing OpenStack for telco NFV from northbound point of view. And the, open, the, the OPN3 is an uh, open source project. It's going to provide a reference platform for NFV. It follows the ETSI NFV architecture and works in close collaboration with a number of upstream open source projects. This diagram illustrates the uh, architecture and the scope of the OPN3. OpenStack is a competitive candidate for Vim. Vim MBI uh, includes two reference points, the interface to uh, VNF manager and the interface to the orchestrator. In OPN3, there is a project named Model Oriented Virtualization Interface. It's dedicated for Vim MBI. Existing uh, OpenStack API are uh, IAS service oriented. We are going to provide a more abstract manual service oriented uh, MBI alternative by extending the general cloud platform. It simplifies the orchestrator and VNF manager and also make it easy for uh, resource access, connection generation, uh, flow identification, and policy operation, and so on. And we will provide a general Vim MBI layer so that various MB models can be quickly implemented and inserted into the platform. Meanwhile, uh, we will cooperate with uh, upstream project so that those features could be part of the open source project like uh, OpenStack. Mm, like each operating system has both low layer uh, SDK and high level application API, Vim should also con consider MBI at different level for different application requirements. Uh, there are intent-based MBI, which are technology neutral and uh, business oriented. There are also functional MBIs, which are uh, function oriented and technology related. The intent-based MBI is promising and very interesting. Intent provide a high level uh, description of requirement to the network with the abstraction from top down. Usually, it's technical neutral. For example, we do not need to see VPN, MPLS, and any other protocols. It express uh, what to do rather than how to do. It's uh, obviously that Intent MBI is simple and easy to use and could be uh, platform and uh, solution independent. As I mentioned previously, uh, both the functional MBI and the Intent based MBI are useful. Uh, they are just for different users. For intended based MBI, the target user are the business designer from carriers and the IT service de uh, developers. For the business designer, uh, they may want to quickly build new network services 
and for the IT service uh, developers, they can integrate network resources and uh, capabilities into their uh, applications. This slide show one mode that uh, how the intended MBI can be used. Firstly, the business designer or the IT developer can use a set of consistent intent primitives to compose a service template. The templates are based on different scenarios, such as uh, bandwidth on demand, high availability, cloud, big data, and real time. Then, end users from education or finance domain or uh, web service providers, uh, big data service providers, and game providers can select the cor corresponding service template. And to design the intent models, we can learn from the intent expression in real world. For example, one may have the intent that I want to watch Harry Potter right now in the living room. In this expression, um, intent is composed of operation and object. In network and uh, NFV domain, we also have similar intent expression, say, I want to create a DMZ, uh, I want to insert a firewall service, I want to block the HTTP flow, I want to adjust the bandwidth to 10 gig. And cause, uh, consequently, we get this general intent model. On the top level, uh, intent is expressed as operation on object. The operation has the semantic that uh, on condition do actions with the uh, constraint. In an in-network and NFV area, object is usually node, connection, and flow. Node, for example, could be a firewall service pool, um, a layer two network, uh, and the connection describes the connectivity among various end, end nodes. It could be point-to-point, point-to-multipoint, mesh, or the composition of the basic topology. And flow is the traffic on connections. It can be video traffic, web traffic, or tagged as uh, VIP traffic. This is a service chain ex a uh, service chaining example that can be modeled with the previous intent expression. We want to apply several network services between the VPC and the internet. We can firstly create three service nodes, then set up the connection between the two end nodes, VPC and uh, internet, and operate uh, an operation applied to the uh, connection is to go through the three uh, service nodes. Then we identify flows to be placed on this connection and do the operation to steer the flow. It's totally uh, topology agnostic. Uh, then I would like to invite Albert to give the following uh, presentation on some telco scenarios. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for coming. Uh, first, I would like to introduce a bit about myself. I am Dong Feng from uh, Huawei Nanjing Institute. I have been doing uh, networking for around 10 years. Okay. Uh, here is some, uh, our, uh, some use cases we get from our uh, virus customers. Uh, uh, here, I will give four, t t four use cases. One is BGP, MPS, VPN. Uh, second one is service chaining. And third one is global topology. And fourth one would be E2E queues guarantee for virtual network. Okay, um, for MPS VPN, uh, we have uh, um, ab abstract model as intent based. Okay, you can see from this uh, uh, diagram that we can use OpenStack to to control uh, the PEs. Uh, that is the physical infra infra uh, infrastructure. Okay, uh, uh, typically inside a data center, user would have OpenStack controlled L2 and L3 networks. And uh, inside that data center, there would be a separate CE, which stands for uh, customer edge. This CE would cr connect to the PE, typically owned by a uh, service provider. OK, uh, abstractly, we can see the below uh, virtual abstraction. Uh, 
like a, a, a VPN service can be divided into uh, a attachment circuit, circuit and tunnel. Okay, just these two paths. Okay, mm, for the OpenStack uh, uh, operating workflow, we use uh, Neutron uh, API extensions. We can create an attachment circuit in each uh, tenant network. And uh, the attachment circuit will be treated as a logical interface. Okay, and in the L2 networks, that could be re represented as a, a set of VLANs or bridge domain. Okay, second, we can create uh, uh, MPLS LSP tunnels. Uh, this step is optional when using dynamic tunnel, tunnels uh, like LDP or ISVP. Uh, we can create an MPS VPN service using attachment circuit and uh, LSP tunnels. Uh, connectivity between attachment circuits in different data centers using uh, LSP tunnels mm, is full mesh of LSPs by default with MPS resiliency enabled. And uh, we, we, we can use MAC withdrawals for faster convergence. And during VM move, a movement or de a delegation and server con uh, con consolidation, we use MAC withdrawal message. Okay, we, here is the link to the related BP. Okay, next I would like to talk about uh, service chaining. Okay, uh, we have a project in the uh, Open OPFV, uh, which is also known as VNF forwarding graph. Okay, typically in the service chain solution, there would be the uh, control plane or uh, service administra administrator, there would be an uh, open stack service chain orchestrator and SGM path controller, okay? What is service chain? I, I think most of the audience must have known that uh, a service chain is an uh, ordered list of, of, of value-added service in a uh, user-specified way. Okay, and uh, since now we are moving to NFV environment, okay, the service chain, Architecture must be a, must uh, need to be a, uh, adapt with the uh, virtualized environment. Okay, uh, here we would have the E2E orchestrator, which contains a service chain orchestrator and NFV orchestrator. And in NFV we have VNF manager, which would control the life cycle of the value added service. And in the cloud OS, which is typically OpenStack, uh, we we. OpenStack acting as the virtualized infrastructure manager. There would be the service chain controller, which is typically maybe uh, some component inside Neutron, and uh, the virtual service switch, which is typically OS, and all the value added service are connected to the uh, virtual service, the virtual switch. And the user can de define a policy, policy center, which can specify the chain selection policy uh, uh, for user. And this this policy would be downloaded into the flow classifier, which is uh, uh, usually we can use OpenFlow, OpenFlow to classify the rules. And OpenFlow is just one implementation. Another implementation we can use NSH header, uh, which IETF IETF has uh, uh, dropped regarding that. Okay, here I want to explain a little bit about the flow about uh, auto medical service provisioning in a free environment. Uh, first. A user can use the E2E orchestrator to uh, logically uh, define the service chain. Then maybe user will request a new uh, new VNF to run that uh, uh, value added service. Uh, then second step is request a new uh, maybe video option to to write. Then uh, the third step would be request a VRM, typically OpenStack, to allocate a new VM for that instance. Fourth step would be create a new VM and load the certain image and and spawn spawn that instance. And fifth step would be synchronize the video of the instance profile and logical service chain definition. Maybe uh, example uh, like uh, char characteristics, uh, status, capacity, address, and uh, attach the virtual uh, service switch to SC controller, service chain controller. Uh, sixth step would be according to the logical service chain definition and the new ad adding uh, instance resource and the service chain controller can generate service chain flow tables for the new adding instance and send to the virtual uh, service switch. Here the uh, service chain flow can be open flow or SAO or something like that, a PBR, policy based route or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, finally, the virtual service switch uh, steers traffic to the new instance according to the policy. 
This is uh, all intent based. And uh, what we are doing in OpenStack is uh, that uh, since uh, you may have known that OpenStack has not does not have the uh, interfaces for uh, for uh, service function chaining. Okay, no open interface to integrate OpenStack with different vendors service fu uh, function uh, instance, uh, both virtual and uh, physical. And uh, a service function instance created by many existing service devices need to be included to provide service chaining ecosystem and uh, OpenStack umbrella, and no well-defined open interface to allow registration of third-party service instance locator, flavor, and capacity information. And uh, a lot of vendors are developing and proprietary instances. And currently, OpenStack has no normalized interfaces for different vendors' service chain drivers. And service chain brings low capex, capex and OPEX by auto-provisioning and steering different tenants flows through different uh, sequences of service functions. The vendors would have to depend on proprietary drivers interface to OpenStack to get service chain functionality. Okay, and here, uh, the interface between the orchestrator and the client would be um, policy-based and specify user's intention of, of service uh, function requirement. The SFC orchestrator translates the client's abstract policy-based service function requirements from the traffic flow into the concrete SFC uh, representation consisting of service function instances uh, locator information. Th this API express an SFC uh, service function chain as a list of service in incidents and ex ex express traffic flow through the flow discriminator. Uh, okay. Mm. Uh, here uh, is the global topology. Okay, since w what we are doing in the ONUS, which is the open network operating system, the ONUS as a controller has the global view. A uh, future in the in the uh, open stack as a VRM. So, uh, esteemed controllers like ONUS have global view of network elements. In every case, open stack being the VRM, there should also be a global topology with virtualized node and link information. Uh, so I think uh, uh, OpenStack should uh, derive some output from the ONF MBI and ONUS to form a good model uh, of API, a good model and API for topology. Uh, currently, uh, if you use OpenStack Neutron, you can see the topology, uh, topology diagram in the certain panel, but there's no uh, APIs, APIs for, uh, for users to get the uh, 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 um, uh, get a topology uh, for themselves. I think OpenStack should derive the model from OPFA to to provide such such API. Okay, another uh, the the last thing we think which is very useful for NFV use case would be E two E queues for WinF. Okay, we as we all know that. Uh, mm, Currently, the queues, the queues would have a definition of a gold medal, a silver medal, a silver medal, a bronze medal like that. Okay, but in a virtualized, uh, uh, in a virtualized environment, the VNFs are just VMs running, uh, running the software. Uh, if 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 uh, like the like the this paragraph is showing showing. I have a VNF here on host one, and uh, uh, I again had uh, has a VNF on host two. But I want a connection between these two, two uh, VM, which would ensure uh, just uh, emulate emulate the physical link, maybe uh, 10 gigabit or 100 gigabit. How to ensure this? Mm, or the actual traffic may come through the switch and to the virtual fabric. Uh, typically, maybe controlled by VXLAN or VLAN. How to ensure the E2 EQs? This is a, this is a great problem, uh, and these models, models and APIs are again needed for Neutron to, uh, and the backend SDN solution should uh, think about it and ensure ensure to meet the uh, uh, NFE demands. Typically, the parameters would be uh, bandwidth, latency and uh, some OM uh, 
uh, parameters. Okay, to, to summarize this presentation, okay, we introduced the motivation of customizing OpenStack for telco ONFE and the northbound point of view, okay, and uh, intent based uh, uh, interfaces and functional interfaces and for typical user cases. More to go uh, with the community support to build OpenStack, uh, to customize OpenStack for the better NFV in telco NFV. Okay, that's all for our presentation. Thank you all to, to come. Okay, any questions? Okay, I guess this is all for today. Thank Okay, uh, service chain controller, okay, I'll uh, go to this page, okay. Okay, service chain controller can be inside a Neutron, maybe use Neutron itself as a service chain controller. And since we have a pluggable uh, architecture, you, user can integrate third party uh, SDN controller as a service chain controller. Maybe you user can use Open Delight or Onus or any other vendor specific SDN controller. It's all supported. Since the North One API is the same, and the uh, and the service chain driver interface is abstracted. Please use the microphone at the back for questions, please. Okay, oh, no problem. Mm. Hi. Hi. Uh, just uh, one question uh, for the information model that you were thinking about. Um, for uh, expressing the um, northbound uh, 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 describing the parameters, do you have a um, um, a, a modeling language in mind uh, already, or have you uh, mm, implemented these? <laughs> this I think oh, Tianlan can clarify. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe you may relate it to to this uh, intent-based models. Yeah, we are uh, uh, we are thinking about. Uh, a language to describe this kind of models, and uh, we have a uh, work uh, named uh, Nemo. Uh, we have related work named Nemo language, and we have submit submitted this uh, uh, submit the design as a draft to IETF, and we also uh, initiated a project in Open Daylight to implement this kind of. Um, intent expression language. Thank you. Uh, questions going back on the service chain controller. Okay. So you said that uh, service chain control, controller or orchestrator is part of OpenStack, but for service chaining between VNFs that may be running between in different OpenStack, doesn't it have to be outside the OpenStack? Uh, no, no, no. I think uh, uh, since we have the locator information, which would which will abstract the uh, OpenStack uh, generated uh, value added service, such as load balancer service and firewall service, and uh, third party controlled uh, service function in the, uh, business manager. Okay, we ha we have the locator information, which will specify to which with which that certain uh, value added service located. Since you, if you have an OpenStack generated, uh, say, firewall as a service, it's backend maybe the IP tables, okay? The IP tables would connect to a certain port of the, this switch. This we can ensure, and we can, we can generate a topology accordingly. And if you user use the physical uh, value added service or the value added service runs on a VM, which is connected to the uh, which is connected connect to the with which all these scenarios are supported. Okay. No further questions? Okay. Uh, thank you all for thank coming. Thank you very much.